Perfect. Okay, so good morning, Melbourne. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to speak to you today. Uh, during my presentation, as already announced, I'm going to talk about uh, the apple microbiome and its potential applications in post -harvest, uh, treating post-harvest crops. So um, first of all, just a short introduction into the microbiome. Um, to the microbiome. So the microbiome consists of all the microbiota that are present in a defined system. This can be bacteria, archaea, fungi, protists, and algae. But it's not, um, not only the microbiota that are present, but it's also their so-called theater of activity, which includes all the microbial structural elements like proteins, lipids, polysaccharides, as well as the microbial metabolites, like sin signaling molecules, toxins, and organic as well as anorganic molecules. So of course, this whole system is highly affected by environmental conditions, including of course, also management as well as post-harvest practices. So um, plant colonizing microorganisms live in close relationships with their host, and they are crucial for plant germination, for growth, health, and productivity of the plant. And uh, we know that microorganisms do not only protect the plants in the field, but even after harvest, this shielding effect is prolonged. So uh, the immense importance of the microbiome for the host plant is now already defined with a specific term, the holobiont. So this means that a eukaryotic host or plant or human is not anymore defined as as one organism, but it is far more the eukaryotic host together with all its associated microorganism that develops under evolution. Okay, so um, as you all know, we are confronted with an immense loss of biodiversity worldwide. And uh, however, it's not only a loss of animal, insect or uh, plant loss, but together with each plant species, for example, that we lose, we also lose its specific microbial community. And such a reduced pool of microorganisms in our environment might result in severe agricultural problems. And we are already facing several of those problems, like uh, increasing problems to control plant pathogens, increasing resistances against pesticides, pesticide residues in the environment, in our crop plants, in our uh, fresh produce. And we also see the non-target effects of uh, the chemicals and the resulting environmental problems. So to face our future with confidence, we need to change our current system. And of course, also apart from the environmental issues of the current uh, chemical strategies, health considerations, as well as potentially uh, potential prohibitions of the current strategies and the pesticides. And there's also a trend towards a, a fully biological production of our foodstuff. And all this um, increased the demand for effective biological alternatives to our current practices. So our mission is therefore to use environmentally friendly biocontrol and our solution for that will be to use microbiome-based strategies that are inspired by nature. Uh, and that's what we do at our institute. So we have different approaches. For example, we go back to the roots by exploring undisturbed environments. We try to find new sustainable methods to protect and promote the plant in the field, as well as post-harvest. And we also investigate uh, the so-called edible microbiome and its potential for human health. So <clears throat> uh, today I'm going to talk about the apple microbiome uh, and especially the post-harvest apple microbiome. But uh, first of all, I will start with a, a study about, which is not about post-harvest, but it's just to introduce you into the apple microbiome itself from, from uh, fresh apples that came directly from the field. So which microbiota are there? Um, here we were interested uh, in two differences between organic and con or organically and conventionally managed apples, and also if there are differences between the different apple, apple tissues. So we separated each apple fruit into peel, flesh, seeds, 
uh, the calyx end, the stem end, and the stem. <clears throat> and uh, here you can see the microbial diversity within the um, whole organic and the whole conventional apples, and also uh, for each uh, tissue, so organic tissue, conventional tissue, and what was the comparison. And what we found here is that the microbiome of uh, all of the whole organic apple, as well as for all of the tissues, uh, the microbiome of the organic apples was significantly more diverse than the um, conventionally managed ones. And also uh, grouping the samples by organic and conventional management revealed um, a significant compositional differences in uh, of those samples, but we even found higher differences when we, or greater differences when we group the samples by the tissue type of the respected uh, management group. Um, okay, so this is also visibly here, uh, uh, the taxonomic composition of each uh, tissue and organic and conventional. And what you can already see is that there is quite a visible differences in the taxonomic composition. But what we also found here was that the organic tissues were more evenly constructed in the comparison to the conventional ones. Uh, for example, here, the uh, this one uh, bacterium, it's Ralstonia in that case, um, covers almost 75% of the overall seed microbiome of conventional apples. Same for fruit pulp. Yes, and we were also interested in uh, how many of those bacteria are present, so we quantified them. And here you can see that the stem for both the organic and also the conventional apples was um, colonized by a very high abundance of microorganisms, and but this was kind of expected beforehand. But what was really surprising for us was this very high abundance of uh, bacteria in the seeds, so significantly higher abundance compared to all the other um, tissues of the apple fruit. And in peel, for organic as well as for the conventional apples so on the peel, the, the peel was lowestly colonized. So um, to sum this up, the apple microbiome is tissue specific. We see a significant management effect on the apple microbiome where organic apples are significantly more diverse and we see a distinct composition um, where almost 40% of the bacteria were different. So however, we found no difference um, between organically and conventionally managed apples regarding the uh, bacterial abundance. So we calculated that you consume with one apple about 10 to the power of eight bacterial genes, independent of organic or conventional. And uh, this suggests that um, an apple fruit um, might offer a specific set of, um, of niches or space that is available for microorganisms to colonize. And this space is always colonized in any case. And we, with our management practices, we are able to a certain content to uh, determine which microorganisms will then colonize this available space. Okay, so now let's switch, however, to, uh, to the study which might be more interesting for you. So the uh, apple post-harvest microbiome. So uh, when we study the storage microbiome, we need to consider a variety of factors. This is, of course, the, uh, the plant itself, uh, the pathogens that affect this plant, the biological control agents that we apply to uh, reduce the abundance of those pathogens. But what we must not forget is the inherent or the native microbiome of those uh, vegetables and fruits. Uh, because there's definitely an interactions with the plant, with the pathogens, and of course also with the biological control agents. So <clears throat> sorry, biocontrol is of course uh, challenging, of course due to the great diversity of um, post-harvest pathogens, the complexity of biological systems, the often very challenging post-harvest treatments and uh, storage conditions, and of course also as you're all aware, it's the registration of the products. Um, however, um, biological post-harvest control is frequently studied 
and there are also numerous products that have been developed over the past uh, decades as an alternative to the classic methods. So, however, it is um, in order to increase the efficiency of biological control, um, combined approaches of biocontrol and classical methods are probably the best solutions. So, in our case, we combined biocontrol with uh, the currently used hot water treatment, but later more on that. First, I will go more into detail about the effect of the hot water treatment on the native apple microbiome. So, uh, hot water treatment, I'm sure I don't have to go in detail uh, here in front of this conference, but um, very important here is that uh, hot water treatment is, so the effect of hot water treatment is not based on, on the direct killing of fungal spores, but it is far more, um, um, it initiates a plant response where the plant accumulates specific heat shock proteins and those proteins then kill the fungal spores. But so far, so this is known for a long time now, but uh, so far it was not clear how this plant response um, that is activated by hot water treatment, how this plant response um, affects the native apple microbiome. And that's what we investigated. So we did this on um, industrial scale and we had hot water treated um, apples and uh, untreated apples, stored them for six months, and then we analyzed the microbiome. So in our case, hot water treatment was highly efficient. Uh, all of the apples that were treated with hot water remained healthy. From the untreated apples, 90% were healthy and 10% were affected by or visibly affected by storage pathogens. Um, and we compared, so we compared the microbiome of the healthy hot water treated apples, the healthy untreated apples, and the uh, uh, affected apples. So um, here you can, we all, and we of course, we also included uh, the apples that came directly from the field, so without any um, treatments or storage. And um, so here you can see the bacterial diversity, which increases over storage. And this is the fungal diversity, which remained the same over storage. And, but we see a significant decrease of bacterial as well as fungal diversity when those apples were affected by storage pathogens. So uh, light blue represents the hot water treatment, uh, ap hot water treated apples. The dark blue bars represent the apples that were untreated but remained healthy after six months of storage. And the uh, red ones are of course the affected ones. So um, between sample differences show again that there is a difference um, of the stored apples to the, to the um, fresh apples from the field, but we also see a significant difference when those apples in the whole microbial community, when the apples were affected um, by the storage pathogens. However, there was no difference um, between the two healthy groups, so hot water and uh, untreated healthy. Um, so this is also clearly visible here for the taxonomic composition. Again, we see a shift in the microbiome when the apples are stored, but also when the apples are affected, bacteria are affected. And here for the fungi, this was, um, uh, we see this, this huge uh, difference to the healthy apples, where more than 90% of the whole um, fungal community in those apples was then covered by those two bacteria and uh, by DNA sequencing, we identified them as Penicillium expansum and Neofibria alba. And um, yeah, and also uh, important here, uh, those apples that were affected that we uh, got from our storage facility, um, they showed an infected diameter of a maximum of uh, three centimeters. So, and, but nevertheless, the whole apple was covered by fungal hyphae and fungal spores and, um, or inside the apple. So also interesting, those two pathogens seem to get along very well with each other uh, by sharing this space. Okay, so what about the abundance uh, or the quantity of bacteria and fungi in those apples? So here we have again for the bacteria, the uh, abundance of bacterial genes remained the same 
for all those groups. And this, is, this also confirms our previous study when we compared the organic to the conventional apples. And for fungi, the abundance uh, increased here when the apples were visibly affected by pathogens. And we also had a closer look on, the, on those two pathogens of interest, so Neophobria and Penicillium. And uh, both pathogens showed an increased abundance when those apples were affected. Uh, here also Neophobria was already present when the apples came from the field, of course, as Neophobria um, affects the apples in the field, and Penicillium, a classical storage pathogen, was almost not present in those uh, fresh apples. So we also calculated the ratio of bacteria to fungi within one apple, and for the apples that came from directly from the field, uh, we see um, uh, um, almost outweighted ratio where the bacteria here uh, uh, slightly uh, prevailed. After six months of storage, um, we see a shift towards more fungi with almost uh, or about 80%. But when those apples were affected, the whole microbial community within, uh, within one apple, so remembering it's about 10 to the power of eight bacterial genes or microbial genes, and the whole microbial community um, was, there were then only 0.6% bacteria and the remaining 99.4% were fungi. So, uh, but what was here uh, really interesting for us to see is that during the entire analysis, we found absolutely no differences between the hot water treated healthy apples and the untreated healthy apples. And uh, neither regarding the bacterial diversity or fungal diversity, the composition or the abundance. Um, and this suggests that this plant defense mechanism that is switched on during the hot water treatment, um, this does not affect at all the inherent or the native apple microbiome. It just targets the, the pathogens. And this again kind of um, confirms or or yeah, this, this intense mutual dependency of the host, so the apple plant and its natural microbiome. So, but now I'm going to tell you about our, um, our trial, um, where we combined the hot water treatment with the biological control agents. And so at first we um, isolated about 800 uh, bacteria from those apples, from the healthy apples and then we tested them for their antagonistic properties towards Neophobria alba and Penicillium expansum. And the, those three that were most effective against both of the pathogens uh, were then used as biological control agents. So uh, we wounded the apples uh, and then infected them with very high quantities of, of uh, fungal spores. And then we stored those apples for 24 hours in order to give those fungi really time to proliferate and to, um, to, to get used to the apple fruit and so on. And of course, such a high uh, quantities of fungal spores will not ever occur under natural circumstances. But by that, we, um, we, uh, we wanted to exert very high pressure of infection on those apples in order to really see if our treatment has an effect. And um, yes, and then uh, after this uh, four hours of, of storage, we uh, treated the apples with hot water and or our biological control agents. And uh, those apples were then stored for five weeks. So uh, here you see the results. Um, this is just uh, the number of infected to healthy apples. And here is the control. So those are just the apples that were infected but not further treated. And all of them were uh, fully rotten. And uh, here this one is one of the biological control agents uh, applied alone. And this is the consortium of all the three uh, most effective biological control agents and you see for both pathogens so there was not really a, an effect and uh, hot water treatment alone already was uh, was worked well but the best results were found when we combined the hot water treatment 
with our biological control consortium consisting of all the three um, antagonistic bacteria. And the same was found when we measured the diameter of infection from those infected uh, apples. And here there was again no difference to the control when we use the biological control agents alone, but the combined method with hot water treatment um, was found to work well, especially here for penicillium, uh, the effect was already significant. Yeah, so this combined approach of hot water treatment and the biological control consortium was efficient in reducing both the pathogen and to promote the disease. So yes, there's still, we still need to, to um, do, uh, to repeat the study, of course, in, on industrial scale. That's what we really plan to do, but so far that's it. And uh, so what, can we conclude on the plant microbiome? So what we know also from previous studies is that the plant microbiome is genotype specific. It is highly diversified and abundant. It is changed during the plant's life cycle. It is vertically transmitted by the seeds, essential for plant development, resilience and health. And it is also infected of course by environmental conditions, including the post-harvest practices. So what can we do? We should consider the natural plant microbiome and its functionality for host and environmental health. We need interdisciplinary approaches for microbiome engineering, combined breeding and plant protection strategies. We need to support beneficial microbes and we also need to rethink sterility in uh, certain parts of our life. And yeah, with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, I have a question from one of my growers who uh, looked at an article that I think was in the Tree Crop magazine. Um, he's asked, is that with the hot water treatment, is that that's the shock response? Is that correct? Uh, yes, this is when those apples are either submerged or they're rinsed with so in our case, it was uh, 50 degree, hot, uh, 53 degree hot water. This is the shock treatment, yes. Yeah, that was my question. So it's 53 degree water. You dip the, the, the apples into the water at 53 degrees, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, that was all I had. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, hi, um, how much do you think that the local, the locality practically of a good affect uh, uh, this situation? Like Australia is completely different environment, very hot, very dry. What would, do you think could be affected by it? Yes, uh, we see and we know that the microbiome is affected also by, by the location. So the most effect seems to be the plant genotype itself. So uh, probably, I don't know, topaz apples might be similar to each other if they are um, um, from, an, from an orchard in Australia and in Austria but we definitely see a great difference or a great effect of the environment, of all the environmental conditions. Of course, the soil, something that is really, because the plant um, really attacks the, um, uh, really gets its microorganisms from the soil. And so the uh, soil, uh, soil biodiversity is also very important for, for the, the apple fruit microbiome then afterwards. Did this answer your question? <laughs> Thank you.
I just one question. What what was the drying process after the treatment? Sorry, again. Uh, what was the drying process after the treatment to dry the fruit? I can't hear you well. I'm sorry. What, um, what was the drying process to dry the fruit after the treatment? Drying? Yes. yes. A drying. Um, we 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 just just uh, let them dry air. on air. So, as I said, this has to be repeated on industrial scale, of course. But we are in contact with uh, some storage facilities in in Austria, and they are also so they have some very good ideas how to implement those this biological control system into the the um, uh, the water cycle for example so yes we really need to test to check everything I have one more one more question fifty three degrees for how long uh, three minutes I'm asking this question on behalf of Harvey sitting next to me. <laughs> At what time do you do it before storage or after storage? So hot water treatment. Before storage. Before storage, yes. Okay. Directly when the apples come from the field. All right, um, Ruby, thank you so much for giving up your time. I know it's, uh, it's probably very early over there uh, in Austria. So thank you very much for your presentation. Right. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.